Leonardo da Vinci was a real Renaissance man. Not only did he live in the literal Renaissance, but he embraced a curiosity for knowledge that earned him the title of polymath. Leonardo was not just a world-class painter, but also an inventor and scientist. So my question is, how did he get so smart? Scattered through his mini notebooks, Leonardo left behind lists of the books he had read, and historians have painstakingly pieced those together. It turns out that Leonardo was an avid reader of all subjects, from cookbooks and romances to mathematical textbooks. I think the books Leonardo was reading reveal his unique approach to learning, so let's take a look at them. It wasn't the hollowed halls of Italian universities that taught Leonardo to crave learning. In fact, as the illegitimate son of a lawyer from the town of Vinci in Tuscany, Leonardo received no higher education and could not even fluently read Latin. To learn about the world that so deeply fascinated him, Leonardo took matters into his own hands and taught himself philosophy, religion, history and science thanks to one of the Renaissance's newest technologies, printed books. The Gutenberg Press was invented in 1440 in Germany, only a few years before Leonardo was born. This press sparked a revolution by allowing knowledge to circulate at speeds never seen before, similar to the boom of the internet in the late 1990s, or even today's rapid expansion of generative AI. In his lifetime, Leonardo collected roughly 200 books in his own personal library, and that number might not rival the book halls of today's booktubers, but back then it placed him as a passionate early adopter of this new technology. Astronomy is not what Leonardo da Vinci is most well known for, but he did dedicate a portion of his library to understanding the stars. Two of these books include texts that were considered fundamental manuals for anyone interested in studying ancient and contemporary astronomy. One of these, the Sphaira Mundi, covers Greek and Arabic astronomy all the way through to astronomy that would have been cutting edge to Leonardo. This text was later studied by some of the world's most famous astronomers, including Copernicus and Kepler. Another book in this section of his library was a condensed translation of Ptolemy's manual, the Almagest, with new commentary and illustrations. This book would have included Ptolemy's extremely influential but incorrect idea that the Earth was the centre of the universe, but these ideas would have still been true to Leonardo, because he wouldn't live long enough to see Copernicus later introduce his heliocentric model. Scholars say that both these books were collected by Leonardo around the time he was working on his own text called the Codex Lester. This collection of scientific writings covered topics like how fossils can be found on mountaintops, the flow of water through rivers and its effects on erosion, as well as an important observation about the luminosity of the moon. If you look up at a crescent moon, you might notice that there's a small amount of light still illuminating parts of the moon that are not directly illuminated by sunlight. This ghostly glow is a phenomenon we now know of as Earthshine or planet shine, and it was Leonardo who first took a stab at explaining where this light is coming from. In his codex, Leonardo suggests that this happens because oceans of water on the moon are reflecting light that is bouncing off Earth's own oceans. While some of the details aren't right, the general idea is. Instead of oceans, scientists now know that this happens because of light bouncing off Earth's clouds and reflecting off the moon's surface. It's likely these astronomy books in Leonardo's library that would have helped him come to these conclusions. If you're looking for more modern books to learn about the universe and our history of astronomical discovery, you might like books like Carl Sagan's Cosmos or any first year undergraduate astronomy textbook. There's been a lot of new discoveries in astronomy in recent years, so one that includes, for example, the detection of gravitational waves or images of a black hole should be fairly up to date. 
Leonardo also had a number of books that explored topics in math and geometry, as well as optics, which was fairly mathematical as it involved tracing the geometry of light rays. These books included classics like Euclid's Elements, which was a quintessential mathematics text that offered a thorough overview of topics in geometry, proportion, and number theory. Scholars believe that diagrams included in Leonardo's edition of Elements may have even inspired the diagrams he used in his own work. Leonardo also owned another work by Ptolemy on the subject of vision and optics. This book incorrectly suggests that vision occurs because of light rays coming out of people's eyes. A medieval work on optics, Perspectiva, is also part of the section of Leonardo's library. This book explores everything from the properties of light to the anatomy of the human eye. Scholars say that this text helped Renaissance artists like Leonardo develop a linear perspective in their artwork to give the illusion of three-dimensional space on a flat canvas. These works also likely influenced some of Leonardo's own fascinations with vision, including his correct idea that the human eye works similarly to a pinhole camera to take light in through the narrow opening of the pupil and project the image on the back of the eye. Unlike the astronomy books, not much of Euclid's elements will be out of date today, except for perhaps the communication style. You can find several modern illustrated versions of elements today. Leonardo might have loved to read one of our modern textbooks on geometrical optics. It tends to be a graduate level course at universities, but you can get a taste of the subject by looking at the MIT Open Courseware page. One of their main readings is Optics by Eugene Hecht. It's no secret that Leonardo was interested in anatomy and medicine. As an artist, he drew hundreds of anatomical sketches that realistically detailed the human body, both inside and out. For this work, scholars say that Leonardo personally dissected over 30 human corpses to better understand how the body worked. In addition to this hands-on work, Leonardo was an avid collector of books about the human body and medicine. One of these includes a Latin translation of a famous Arabic medical text that was one of the most widely read medical manuals during the Renaissance. Similar to a textbook, this book would have been a one-stop shop to learn about a variety of medical topics, and scholars say it covered everything from diet and drugs to surgery. Another of Leonardo's medical texts, the Fasciculus Medinice, also explored topics like medical astrology, bloodletting, and treatments for wounds and plague. For a modern overview of the human body, you might try reading the Netta Atlas of Human Anatomy, which is a medical textbook that's known for its colorful illustrations. Besides being a man of art and science, Leonardo was also enlisted by powerful men in Italy and beyond to engineer military weapons and machines. To help him succeed in these commissions, Leonardo collected books on military and scientific engineering. Scholars say that some of the military tech that Leonardo offered to his clients matched the specs of examples from his library, including portable bridges, siege technology, powerful cannons, and covered vehicles. These books may have also helped him imagine some of the more fantastical machines he designed as well, including robotic knights and flying mechanical birds. Today, modern books like The Arms of the Future look at how rapidly evolving technology, like autonomous weapons, are changing warfare. Military applications still work alongside scientific advancements, just like they did 500 years ago in Leonardo's time. No matter what subject he was studying, Leonardo handcrafted his library based on his curiosity about the world. Thanks to the newly invented printing press, he was able to indulge in the privilege of accessing around 200 books, enough to learn about and make contributions to several different fields. With 10,000 times that amount of books published each year, just imagine how much we can learn today if we really put our minds to it. One modern way to learn science is with this video's sponsor, Brilliant. 
Brilliant helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Learning a little every day is one of the most important things you can do, both for personal and professional growth, and Brilliant can help you to develop a powerful daily learning habit. They have newly updated math courses, including calculus, visual algebra, and solving equations. You can work your way up through interactive challenges that bring abstract concepts to life. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash tibbies, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description. Brilliant's also given my viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. Thanks for watching this video and thank you to my Patreon supporters. A special shout out to today's Patreon Cat of the Day, Onyx.